Hello all, myself Dr. Praveen Raj, Assistant Professor, Department of Community Medicine, SLIMS, Puducherry. So today our topic is medical entomology. So what do you have to know from this topic? We have to know how to identify a given vector. Then what are all the disease caused by that particular vector? And if the vector is going to have any specific features, then you have to know. And what are the control measures of those disease caused by that particular vector. So these are the things that we are going to see. So what is this? And what are this? All are same or is there any difference? So all are not same. There are some difference, but still we can call all together as Arthropods. So these are all called as arthropods. So what are arthropods then? So arthropods are invertebrate animals having an exoskeleton, a segmented body, and a pad jointed appendages. So as you can see here, this thing is having one exoskeleton, one shell-like thing. You can see that rigid shell is there. Then you can see here this uh, thing is having one head. Thorax and abdomen, you can able to see, and also you can able to see the jointed leg. Here you can see pad jointed legs are seen. So there are four pairs of legs you have you are seen here. So these are arthropods. So when you are going to study about this arthropod, then it is called entomology. So what is medical entomology then? The study of arthropods of medical importance. So that is going to be medical entomology. So here we have different class of arthropods. It is insecta, arachnida, and crustacea. So initially I have seen you some pictures. So the first picture which I, which I was showing you was so this one. This is a tick. And this you know, this is housefly, and this is sorry, this is an housefly, and this is mosquito. So if you see under class insecta, you have mosquitoes, flies, lice, fleas, and bugs. And under class arachnida, you have ticks, mites. Under class crustacea, you have cyclops. So why these differences are there? Even though all our other ports, we have these differences. So if you see, mosquito can be under crustacea also, or ticks can come under insecta also. Why these differences are there? So that we will see what are the major features of insecta, arachnida, crustacea, or how to differentiate a given vector in under insecta or arachnida or crustacea. We will see that. So these are the major differences that we are seeing. How to say the given vector is insecta or insect? So first thing is you have to look for body division, then legs, then antenna, wings, and where they are found. So if you see body division. Insecta will be having separate head, thorax, and abdomen. Whereas arachnida and crustacea will be having cephalothorax and abdomen. That is, your head and thorax are going to be jointed, then abdomen can be separate. The same, both will be having cephalothorax and abdomen. And see about legs. Insecta will be having three pairs of legs, whereas arachnida is having four pairs. Crustacea, five pairs. Just looking at the legs, we can able to say it belongs to insecta or arachnida and crustacea. Then if you see antenna, insecta is going to have one pair of antenna. Arachnida, you don't have antenna at all. So that's why in ticks you are seeing there is no antenna. And crustacea will be having two pairs of antenna. Wings, insecta will be having wings. Whereas arachnida and crustacea, they don't have. There are some insects that doesn't have wings, but mostly insecta will be having wings. And insecta will be mostly found in the land, arachnida also in the land, crustacea that will be in water. So these are the major difference. When you are going to see the body division and legs, almost 90% you are able to find whether the given vector is insecta or arachnida and crustacea. So after that, you can able to differentiate among in insecta. 
suppose you found that given vector is insect so you will be knowing what are the what are all the insects are present and the insect are. so you can able to differentiate among them so that's how we are going to identify the given vector so here you can see the same thing is given here so now we have to know some definition so what is vector then so we are keep on i was keep on repeating vector vector so vector is an arthropod or other invertebrate which transmit infection by inoculation into or through the skin or mucous membrane by biting or by deposit of infective material on the skin or on food or other objects so basically they are going to trans tra transport infective agent from one place to another and they are going to inoculate or they are going to bite and spread the uh, disease now there is other terminology like definitive host and intermediate intermediate host so what is definitive host the host in which sexual cycle are going to happen they are definitive host and if there is a sexual cycle alone is present then it will be intermediate host for example so this is a life cycle of plasmodium which is going to cause malaria that we already know so you can see the tiny mosquito is sitting here it is going to inject sporozoites this sporozoite it is a form of plasmodium and it is going to undergo development that is growth we can say growth or development so this sporozoite is going to form merozoite then in it is going into rbc then it is going to again uh, form merozoite and some of them are going to come outside and they are going to form gametocytes so we can see female and male gametocytes are there so till the time you are going to see only the development there is no sexual cycle is present and then another mosquito is coming it is going to bite you then it is going to suck the gametocyte then if you see the whole process here on the left side it is going to happen in the mosquito so inside mosquito this gametocytes they are going to form and they are going to join and form zygote so here you are seeing sexual cycle so from this you can know whatever is happening under the human that is asexual cycle so man is a intermediate host whereas in under mosquito it is happening uh, sexual cycle is happening so mosquito is a definitive host so once again i am saying sexual cycle will be definitive host and asexual will be intermediate host so how this arthropods are going to uh, transmit from one to uh, one person to another or one place to another so that could be of three possible uh, types one is direct contact then mechanical transmission then biological transmission so what is direct contact this is uh, directly transmitted from man to man through close contact if you see scabies and pericloses are very good examples that we have and mechanical transmission through vectors they are just going to carry the agent so that we are going to see in this whole uh, lecture then biological transmission here the disease agent undergoes developmental change with or without multiplication of vector so the disease will be having a sexual cycle with or without sexual cycle so that will be bi biological transmission so under biological transmission we have three types again that is propagative cyclo developmental and cyclo propagative so if we say propagative only multiplication that is only sexual cycle will be seen there is no development of cyclical changes so that one example is plague bacilli in rat flea then cyclical de development is only developmental stage only cyclical change there is no sexual that will be seen in filarial parasite in pulex mosquito but a cyclo propagative you can able to see both sexual changes and asexual changes that is sexual and developmental changes so that we have already seen on example that is malaria just now we have seen how it is happening so this are the mode of transmission of arthropod this is how the arthropods are going to transmit this is so now the next slide so in this slide uh, we are going to show some of the disease caused by each 
arthropod like male muscular medicus mandaria phyleria and viral encephalitis then dengue fever is like fever and same like that house fly is going to cause typhoid paratyphoid diarrhea recently so all these things are given in your bar that you can just go through and we are going to see one by one so we will see in detail about all this so you can see there is this much amount of diseases are present which are going to cause to die all this arthropods that is why medical uh, entomology is important to know and now we will come to mosquito so if you see mosquito there are four major mosquitoes are there in india one is anopheles ulex aedes and pansonia so what are the general characteristic features of mosquito how can we say that mosquito is an insect of course insect are we having head thorax and abdomen so we have head thorax and abdomen the insect it is going to have pad appendages then also wings will be present so as you can see here head has a pair of large compound eyes a long proboscis is present so proboscis is the one which is going to suck the blood from human being and palpi is present on either side of proboscis when antenna will be present so antenna will be bushy in male and less bushy in female so this palpi and antenna they are sensory organs of the mosquito then you have thorax the pad wings dorsally present and three pad legs are seen so by the same three pairs of legs we can say this is a insect then abdomen it has 10 segments so these are the basic uh, features of mosquito overall now suppose a mosquito is given to you how to identify which type of mosquito it is so if you know all this thing you can able to identify which type of mosquito even if there is you know only if you have only one thing from this suppose you have, you have been given only egg samples or you have been given only uh, resting position almost you can able to find which type of mosquito it is so we have to know anatomy then microscopy of mosquito that is adult mosquito how it is how it will be then mouth part of mosquito how it will be then egg larva and habitat resting position so these are the things that we are going to see now so i have three mosquitoes here in this slide so one on the left side and right side and on the bottom so can you able to guess which mosquito is of which so to identify a mosquito first thing what you have to see is you just look at the body of the mosquito first if that mosquito is black in color with white stripes you see if you look, you look the stripes in the legs also if you are seeing a mosquito with black color and white stripe then it is aedes so that is why we are calling this mosquito as tiger mosquito because of this white dark and white bands that we have we are seeing in the mosquito suppose if the mosquito is not having any of this pattern so it is just without any uh, black and white spots then next thing you have to look is look at the wings if you see in the wings you will be having dark spots like this so you can see one two three four and again one two three four if you can able to find this dark spot then it will be anopheles mosquito so first thing you have to see the body parts then we have we are going to see the wings suppose if you are not going to see uh, spots also there is no white bands there is no spot in the wings then it will be culex okay so there is another thing that you can able to see in culex that is we we'll call it as hunchback appearance so this is the thorax you can see and this is the start of the abdomen you can see 
So here we are having an angle. One small correct appears a bit elevated, and we are seeing an angle. So this kind of appearance is called hunchback appearance. This is present only in humans. You cannot able to see it in any other mist. So first you look for the body part, then wings, then uh, by looking by excluding these two things, you can go for two legs. So this is how by just looking at the anatomy of mosquito, you can able to see which mosquito it is. Now let us come to this is the mouth or head part of mosquito. So here you are seeing one head with two eyes, and then center you are seeing proboscis. On either side you are seeing palpi, then you can also be able to see antenna. So here it is given male, here it is given female. How? First thing, whenever you are looking into a head part or mouth part, you check for antenna. If it is bushy, as you can see here, it is bushy, bushy, then it will be male. If it is not, then it will be female. Now, we will see in this example. So here we have anaphylax, Q-lex and radius. So what are the differences that we are going to see in all these three head part? First thing, you check whether the given head part is male or female. So you can see the left hand side, it is male because the antenna are bushy in each Mosquito, you can see. Anaphylaxis also, it is bushy, Q legs and aides. Everywhere, the antenna is bushy. Now, look for proboscis and palpi. If the palpi and proboscis are going to be almost the same level, so here also you can see, and here also you can see, if it is almost in the same level, then it is anaphylaxis. Suppose the proboscis is longer than palpi, then it is culex. And suppose the proboscis is short when compared to palpi, then it is radius. So this is how we are going to identify male mosquito and also female mosquito in case of anaphylaxis. When it comes to culex and anus, here this proboscis will be longer and palpi will be very small. So here in both mosquitoes, you can this. So just by looking at the head, by looking at the palpi and proboscis, you can able to find which mosquito it is. And antenna is going to help to find out the gender of the mosquito. To find out. So here only the thing you have to see is proboscis and palpi to differentiate other mosquitoes. Then another thing is resting position. So by just looking at the resting position, you can able to find whether it is anaphylaxis or culex and aedes. Anaphylaxis will always have 45 degree inclination. You can see one angle here. This is how it is going to sit on the human. Whereas culex and aedes, they don't have that angle. So this is how we are going to differentiate anaphylaxis and culex. So resting position done. Head part is also done, and by just looking at the anatomy also, it is done. Next, we will see about eggs. So, if you see the life cycle of most of the arthropods, it will start as an egg, then larva, then adult. Egg, larva, and one more stage is the pupa, then adult. Sorry. So, how to differentiate by looking at the eggs? In anaphylaxis, the legs will be, sorry, the eggs will be having lateral floats. And these eggs will be laid singly on water. They are not going to be in groups. So here you can clearly see this picture. So the lateral floats are there on either side. A boat shaped lateral float eggs always seen in anaphylaxis. Whereas here you see, they don't have lateral floats, but they are cigar shaped. So cigar shaped eggs are of Aedes mosquito. Here you can see the, the eggs are in clusters. So this is our, these are of Culex mosquito. So that is how we are going to differentiate eggs of each mosquito. 
then you can see larva and you can see this larva is just uh, horizontally it is flying whereas these larva have tilted like as you can see it is not uh, horizontally lying on the water surface so this line you are seeing this is the water surface this line is these are the water surface okay on so this picture also i see this is the water surface this line you are seeing this on the water surface you can see this larva it is just sticking into the water surface or it is horizontal into the water surface whereas this larva it is lying inside the water and it is having one small connection tube is present here so why the difference is that this difference is that because this larva since it is surface breeder it is going to be just uh, touching the water surface it can directly take oxygen whereas this larva it is submerged into the water it cannot able to directly absorb oxygen so it is forming a small tube so in this tube it is going to absorb oxygen so this tube is called siphon tube this siphon tube is present only in culex and aedes mosquito and of less doesn't have siphon tube so by this way you can able to differentiate larva of anaphylax and culex anaphylax doesn't have siphon tube culex and aedes they have siphon tube so x we have seen larva we have seen now adults resting position that is also we have seen adults anaphylax they are going to have for feeding inclination culex and aedes doesn't have both so that is how you are you can able to uh differentiate a given mosquito whether it is aedes or um, anaphylax or culex so now we will see some specific features of each mosquito so this is anaphylax so we have different anaphylax uh, species this anaphylax culicifes uh, that is rural malaria then fluvia tls that is for forest and fungus so then we have stephan sing that is for urban malaria so different species that we have so we will be already knowing the main disease caused by anaphylax is malaria and it is caused by female anaphylaxis male doesn't cause any disease because it is going to feed on plants plant juice female it is yeah, it is going to need blood so it is going to transmit malaria and malaria malaria it is seen outside of india this we have already seen it is going to sit in 45 degree angle in what are the breeding sites of anaphylax it is going to breed in fresh water or clean water so if you see the breeding site of aedes it is going to breed in artificially collected domestic water if there is some tire coconut shell any uh, plastic bottle is there so during rainy season the water is going to accumulate and aedes they are going to breed in those so aedes in artificially collected domestic water anaphylax in fresh water and culex will be in dirty water so this we have already seen is a cyclo mosquito eight larva from adult this is anaphylax mosquito why just the resting position we can able to see as you can see here spots we can differentiate this is anaphylax there is no dark white bands nothing wings you can able to see resting position you can able to confirm this is anaphylax then culex in culex we have culex fetigans the, the disease caused by culex are bancroftian pederasis rapid encephalitis and this thing fever culex is known as nuisance mosquito why it is going to cause noise whenever it is going to fly it is going to tap its wings and the noise will be there okay, so it is called nuisance mosquito and it is going to breed in dirty water that we have seen the flight range of culex is 11 kilometers okay whereas the flight range of aedes it can be 100 meter that we will see flight range of culex is 11 kilometers and it is going to have hunchback appearance that we have already seen 
that angle between thorax and abdomen. So this is a dulex mosquito. It doesn't have dark white bands, and it doesn't have any spot also. And you can able to see that hunchback. It is same. This is a dulex mosquito. Again, it is same. Here the hunchback is visible even much better. So next thing is we have Aedes mosquito. So it is going to have the white strips on the body, which is that is why it is going. To, it is called as tiger mosquito. Then we have Aedes aegypti, Aedes mitatus, and Albopictus. These are the species of Aedes that we have. So diseases caused by Aedes mosquitoes are dengue, then dengue hemorrhagic fever, then yellow fever, filariasis outside of India, even Zika Zika virus. That is caused by Aedes mosquito. Here we are seeing the same thing. So this will be Aedes will be seen abundant during rainy season, and it is going to breed in artificially accumulated water. Legs are cigar that we have already seen cigar shaped eggs, eggs sorry eggs. Then they usually bite at the daytime. The flight range is hundred meter, right? And that's why, under international health regulation, if you see in airport, in and around airport, I mean around four hundred meter, there should not be any mosquito. So this they will be seeing. And age, age is age. The index should index should be zero. It should be zero actually. So some other general features of mosquito, um, overall mosquito. So if you see mosquito. Female, they are going to need blood. Male will be uh, feeding on plant juice. Then time of bite will be evening or night. Except Aedes, that will be bite. That will be biting in the daytime. Then resting habit, dark and cool corners. It is going to rest. Breeding habit that we have already. That is again I am saying anaphylaxis, clean water, cooler, dirty polluted water. Aedes artificially collected water. And one more mosquito that is Manzana. It is going to be in aquatic plants. So we have certain control measures for mosquitoes. One, we are going to directly control the larva, then adult, then personal protective measure against mosquito bites. So under these topics, we are going to see. What are the control measures? So, if you see larval measure, how to control larva? One is the environmental control. Then we are going to use some chemical to kill the larva, and biological control also near. Adult again, we have residual sprays, spray spray, then genetical control. And the protective measures we are having nets. Then we are going to have screening in the windows or door, and repellents we have. Let us see one by one. So first thing is environmental control. So the main thing is whichever environment which favors the production of this larva. So we have to remove that. So that process is called source reduction. So how we are going to do by minor engineering methods like filling, leveling, and drainage of breeding places, and proper water management should be there in the city. So if these things are there, then Source detection has been done. We can able to control the larva. One thing is chem. Another thing is chemical control. That is, we are going to use mineral oil, Paris green, or synthetic insecticides. So, how this mineral oil is going to act? When we are going to pour oil in the water, it is going to form a thin film. So that layer, it is going to cut short the. Oxygen supply to the particular larva. So even though the larva is going to have siphon tube, we cannot be able to take the oxygen supply because the oil will be making the thin line. So that is why uh, that is how the mineral oil act. Next is Paris green. The composition is copper acetate arsenic. So it acts as a stomach poison. So it is mainly kills by Uh, it mainly kills anaphylaxis larva since they are surface feeders. 
then other synthetic insecticide we have pentheon and uh, abate is the most commonly used for uh, synthetic insecticides nowadays then biological control we have gambusia afens and guppy fish then we also have bacillus thuringiens which is used for mosquito control so through this fish and bacteria we are doing biological control of mosquito larva now larva is done let us go on to adult measure what are what things we have one is residual spray and spray spray then genetic control under residual spray we have ddt the problem with ddt is now we are seeing resistance so we are going to malatya now or linden then spray spray we have that is extracted from pyrethrum so this pyrethrum is a plant based insecticide that we have genetic control if you see uh, there is uh, research is going on for male sterilization uh, that we are still under research so these are the adult measures so now we have protection against mosquito bites so one is we have mosquito nets even we have insecticide treated mosquito bites also available so if you see what should be the size of that hole in the mosquito net it should be 0.0475 inch diameter and number of holes should be 150 per square inch these are the things about mosquito nets then we are also doing screening we are uh, doing screening in windows and doors and repellents that we are using odomos and all other repellents so mainly diet and tolomide is the common uh, insecticide which is going to present in the mosquito so these are the mosquito control measures that we have seen for larva control adult control then personal protective measures so these are about mosquito so now we will move on to next arthropod so you can see it is having head thorax and abdomen is seen wings are present three pairs of legs so of course it is insecta and then under insecta what it is it is house fly how to know we will see the first thing is musca domestica this is the most common species of house fly that we are going to um, that we are seeing so the general features are they are mouse gray in color and body is able to head thorax and abdomen it have a pair of antenna a pair of large compound eyes and they also have proboscis if you look into the thorax you can able to see uh, two to four long and dark stripes in this thing then thorax will be having a pair of wings and three pair of legs then if you see abdomen will be segmented so this is the uh, same thing the you are having that long to dark stripes two to four long to dark stripes and we are also having three pairs of legs and uh, antenna is present above the you know, eyes wings this is the identification point you have to write then life history the females are laying around 120 to 150 eggs at one sitting larva also called as maggots and pupa will be dark brown and barrel shape other life span will be up, up to 15 to 20, 25 days so this is the life cycle that we are seeing we are seeing different stages of larva then pupa and it is putting into adult breeding habit it breeds in the freshly fresh horse manure or human excreta or any other manure so that is where it is going to breed then feeding habit it cannot eat solid food what it is going to do it is going to vomit first in the food if the food it is going to it is going to vomit in the food then it makes a solution again it is going to suck that vomit so this is the picture of 
house fly then restlessness it is it helps in spread of infection mechanically because it is going to jump here and there resting habit it rest on the vertical surface and hanging objects and it can go up to 4 meters so this is is caused by house flies are typhoid paratyphoid diarrhea dysentery cholera even polio so hepatitis these are the things that is going to cause mode of transmission one mechanical transmission as it is going to sit from one place to another it can carry the agent on the body legs wherever it is then vomit drop then defecation so it can vomit i mean it can while eating it is going to vomit and it is going to defecate at the same time also control measures we have environmental control again source protection and main thing is sanitation proper hygiene and sanitation has to be maintained storing garbage and kitchen waste in bins then sanitary latrine should be there there should not be any open defecation another thing is insecticidal control that we have residual spray, sprays of ddt linden then spray sprays we have pyrethrin and linden also we have ddt then larvicides these are the insecticidal compounds so in markets that fly papers are also uh, available and this is contain resins and castor oil and protection against fly so again proper hygiene and sanitation and screening of house hospital and food market also then health education also important in case of uh house flies so the third topic third uh, outer pole we are having here is what it is it is having no dark and white spot So this is that hairless mosquito. Then it is not having white spot. Sorry, spots in the wings. So this is not anaphylaxis also. And is this culex? This is not culex. This is sand fly. How to differentiate mosquito and sand fly? So one thing is you can see hairs will be present all over the body. then you see the proportion of body and leg leg will be longer than body so why why leg is longer in case of sand fly because sand fly it is going to hop from one place to another it is going to jump so for that thing the leg is very long then other different differentiating features if you see sand fly will be smaller than mosquito that we can able to See, we can we cannot able to compare here. And one more feature is, if you see in sand fly, wings will be always upright and erect and upright. It is not going to stick into the body. Whereas in mosquito, if you see, see here, this is a mosquito. This is sand fly. Here you can see wings are just present above the abdomen. Whereas here it is upright and erect. So here itself the disc. Differentiating features are given. Size of the sand fly is small. Wings will be upright and lanceolate. That is the shape of the wings, lanceolate shape. Then legs will be longer. And then body will be hairy, and it is having habit of hopping. So, so these are the differentiating features to see mosquito or sand. So sand fly, it is also, again, it is it is an insect. It is having head, thorax, and abdomen, and three pairs of legs, antenna, palpi, the balls. So several things is present. And abdomen, we have ten segments covered by hairs. So these are the identification points that we are going to see. The differential features such as we have seen. Again, life cycle will be same as any of any other arthropod. Egg, then different forms of larva, pupa, and adult. and only female bites during night bite is irritating and painful so this sand fly they are going to live in dark places 
uh, cracks and crevices. So mostly in capsule shed, you can see this uh, sand. So this is a sand that are called as a sand like fever and oriental stone. These are the other species that we have here. It is like going to cause this disease. The control will be spraying DDT and linden. Another thing is proper sanitation. We have to remove shrubs and vegetation. Then we have to fill the cracks and crevices also. So, so with this, we will conclude this first session of medical entomology. So next session, we will see about all other arthropod that we have here. So you just keep thinking what this particular arthropod is. So we will see what this is in next class. Thank you.